Beach and Ariel Ballet from Indianapolis. Choreography over Crush Cars. Coming up next, it's blowing and injected ballerinas engaging in some slam dancing monster style. This is Trucks and Tractor Power, featuring the superstars of the four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Nationals Monster Truck Challenge. Welcome to Trucks and Tractor Power on the Nashville Network. Today, it's the four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Fall Nationals from a very wet and soggy Indiana State Fairgrounds here in Indianapolis. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Lee, and normally it would be a symphony of horsepower, but thanks to Mother Nature, these monsters will be singing in the rain. And here with more in today's competition is Army Armstrong. Gary, yeah, your reference to music is kind of uh, apropos at this time because there's an old saying, if you're going to play the music loud, it's got to be rock and roll. And we've already had the roll portion of that saying. Andy Brass literally rolled Bigfoot just trying to get into the program today here at Indianapolis, Indiana. There's another problem we're having here today. The weather, as you can tell, it is raining. It's raining hard. Any other type of motorsports anywhere in America, they would have called it off by now. But we're here to race monster trucks. That's exactly what you're going to see. That's what you tune in to see. You're going to see it. But instead of rocking and rolling, you may be seeing some slipping and sliding before this day's over. Back to you, Gary. Arma, you alluded to the rollover in qualifying. It's an all-out effort. No sandbagging in qualifying for these monster events. And here's a look at Andy Brass and the new creation of Bob and Marilyn Chandler. Bigfoot 10. He gets in trouble right here. Rolls on over. Spectacular rollover, but very, very minor damage. Well, the rollover was a result of the rear suspension breaking. Now, the rear wheels kind of had a mind of their own. After the first jump, you might be able to see it here. They kind of cocked themselves, see? Well, Andy Brass is trying to steer straight with the front wheels, but the back of the truck has got a mind all its own. They put it back together. They're going to be in competition today. But you always got to keep working on any kind of a race truck, don't you? Well, you're right, Army. The repairs have been made. Bigfoot, the big blue Ford, will be in action as we come back to Indianapolis. Welcome back to the Indiana State Fairgrounds here in Indianapolis, where Ford trucks present the Penta four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Fall Nationals, a part of the BF Goodrich Performance Series. Gary Lee here in the broadcast booth, and down at the starting line, trying to stay dry, is Army Armstrong. Gary, we may have just received a break. It has stopped raining. We're just getting ready to go racing. So the drivers have asked the grounds crew to put some sand on the starting line in order to try and dry it out. Now, you've got to remember, the far end of the track is damp. The cars are damp. They're going to be jumping over it. So it's going to be their advantage to clear all the cars. The shutdown area, it's just mud and goo. But we're standing on the starting line right now that they've laid out about four inches of sand. I don't think that's going to work. I think the first time one of these behemoth monster trucks drills that four-wheel drive engine on this sand. He's just going to make holes, and everybody behind him is going to have to run in his groove. Let's see what happens. Back to you, Gary. All right, Army, we'll take a look now at uh, the round one matchups equalized with the fast qualifier David Morris against Tropical Thunder and Nightmare, the fifth fastest, against the 11th quickest qualifier, Bigfoot. Of course, he rolled over in qualifying. Snakebite against uh, Nick Rossi's Outlaw, the King Crunch, Scott Stevens against John Moore and No Problem. Overkill against number 10 fast qualifier Gary Porter, the Carolina Crusher, and Gravedigger against Fred Schaefer's Barefoot. As we take a look at Coat Cobra, there he is. That is the snake bite truck. We're going to be seeing something today that we haven't paid much attention to in the past. Coat Cobra out of Cobra Creek, Colorado comes up. That is the procedure the drivers go through before they actually go to race. Now, Nick Rossi comes to qualify. He doesn't follow the whole circuit with us, so this is a whole new animal to him. He's been around a long time, but he himself, as the owner, has not been the driver. He's the driver today also. Both drivers have done what we call a dry hop. They've kind of, well, dug their hole in the starting line. Well, we'll see, of course, as uh, Colt Culver will take this round as he knocks out Nick Rossi. We'll see how much damage they do to that uh, sand they put in the starting area. Well, like I'm saying, I'm thinking about three trucks into this thing, there's going to be little trenches, Doug, uh, because the cleats of the tire are going to just dig holes. you got to remember, these are 10,000-pound trucks with 1,500-horsepower engines. They'll dig a hole in a hurry. But watch the replay again. The far lane, Colt Cobra in snake bite. He takes the whole shot right there. He'll take the advantage, the win over Nick Rossi. And right now, the Colt is standing by with Army Armstrong. Colt, it looks like early in the field is the place to be today. Yeah, you know, Army, the track's going away for us, you know, but uh, 
the Ford Brass Eagle Snake Bite's going to pull through. We got the Firestones on there. They seem like they're pulling with the track real good. The starting line's a little bit sloppy, but uh, we're digging in with the Firestones, and we're going to keep right in with the field the rest of the day. Colt Cobra walks away with the big thumbs up. He is certainly a factor on the tour this season. And here's the guy who's a real factor. We saw the green frame there of the great digger in the far lane. That is Lyle Hancock. He is a hired gun. Dennis Anderson chose Lyle Hancock to drive an all-new Grave Digger race truck, and he pulls up alongside the Mo Power, barefoot of Fred Schaefer. We told you that there was going to be a ritual before the starting line. Drag racers are familiar with it. They call it burnouts. We're going to call it dry hops here, but every monster truck, like I say, is trying to dig their own hole in order to get bite. Dodge near side, Grave Digger far lane. Whoa, Whoa almost too close to call. Who won it, Army? I don't know. With that shutdown there, he put on a show all its own. It is slippery down there. There is the green frame we saw just moments ago of that uh, the race truck, Grave Digger, the latest generation of the Grave Digger truck. And there is the Dodge Barefoot of Fred Schaefer. And uh, we still do not have the official word. Let's take a look Watch from the this attitude. angle. Watch the front of each truck. One's up and one's down. Keep an eye on us right now. Grave Digger, the nose is up. See, the Dodge is down. Now the Dodge goes up. Grave Digger settles down. They both pull a trucker on the finish line. You call it. Oh, well. Looks like uh, Fred Schaefer may have won it by a foot or two. Now, from that angle, you see that the, the Grave Digger was not real straight. Now, watch again. Watch this angle here. Watch the Grave Digger in the left lane. He's out of shape right there. Yeah, but those guys, they live out of shape, it seems like. I still don't know who won the race. Fred Schaefer has been declared the winner. Fred Schaefer actually won the race, and from that one angle, you can see that Fred was very straight. The Grave Digger was not. We take a look at Nightmare. Kirk Dabney out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, about a two-hour drive northeast of Indianapolis. And there, after the repairs were made, Bigfoot 10, Andy Brass, Bob and Marilyn Chandler's behemoth out of St. Louis, Missouri. Just a moment ago, you talked about the Grave Digger being a race truck. The way you can tell this is the race truck Bigfoot is the yellow and red stripe on the side. All of the Bigfoot trucks have been solid blue. The race trucks have that stripe. Meanwhile, the GMC is trying to pull him back in the far lane. No way. Andy Brass has got this one covered, Gary. Did not need the photo finish there. As Brass takes the victory in Bigfoot 10, as we indicated, he rolled over. We showed you the video earlier in qualifying when he got upside down. Very minor damage was done. The truck was quickly repaired. And you can see that Andy Brass will be a player here this afternoon. One more look now. Andy Brass, the near lane. He gets the good hole shot right here. Kirk Dabney really didn't stand a chance in Nightmare. And the big blue Ford takes the victory. And there is Kirk Dabney climbing out of the, the nightmare. So he's doing a good job with the brand new truck. As Equalizer has defeated Tropical Thunder, Bigfoot takes out Nightmare. So they'll see each other in round two. Snake bite victorious over Nick Rossi's outlaw. And no problem with John Moore. Knocks out King Crunch. The Carolina Crusher, Gary Porter, advances over Overkill. And Barefoot Fred Schaefer, as you saw, knocking out the Grave Digger. As some repair work going on in the paddock area, here's Army Armstrong. Well, Gary, we're into what they call a thrash now. We're between rounds, and Andy Brass and the Bigfoot crew who had so much trouble qualifying. Remember, we told you they flipped the truck? They made it through the first round, but it cost them something. They've torn something up on the rear end of the truck. They're actually welding it back together right now. We got a guy under the nose of the truck trying to fix something up in the drive compartment, but Andy Brass, the driver, is sitting in the driver's seat, staying cool, thinking about driving that truck in the next round. Back to you, Gary. Andy might be in the cockpit now, but he does his share of work on Bigfoot, believe me. Welcome back to a damp, overcast Indiana State Fairgrounds here in Indianapolis as we're ready for round two competition. At Army Armstrong earlier in the program, you alluded to the sand at the starting line and how it will get chewed up. And you can see some of the results right there from the first round competition. That starting line area is getting well abused as we take a look for the first time at David Morris in the equalizer. Of course, he knocked out Wayne Smozanic and Tropical Thunder in round one at a Springfield, Tennessee. David Morris, and this is a reunion of sorts with driver and truck, and he goes up against Bigfoot and Andy Brass. You know, I find it interesting. Each of these trucks has their own personality, but there's a chemistry. Now, Andy Brass, Bob Tanner, they think alike. David Morris comes back into the sport with Gary Cook, and it's almost like two heads make one. But what we call this in the sport, 
Battle of the Blues, brothers. Here we go. One of General Motors product, one of Ford. And the Ford will take the victory. Bigfoot, the Ford fans seem to enjoy that here at the end of the United States Fairgrounds. And the brass in Bigfoot 10, the latest in the long line of racing trucks in a Bob and Marilyn Chandler shop in St. Louis, Missouri. There's a look at David Morris in the equalizer. One of the things that I find interesting is David Morris's truck was the first to come with the engine behind the driver and down. The latest state-of-the-art truck is in the far lane, Bigfoot. Where's the engine located? Behind the driver and down. And the driver's in the middle of the cockpit. The latest in the lineage of monster trucks out of St. Louis, Missouri. There's a good look at Fred Schaefer in barefoot. And this is a big Dodge out of the state of Illinois. Yeah, Fred's teamed up with the Mopar people to put that Dodge name right back on top of the truck selling list, and he is going to represent them well, but not going to be a walkover because Gary Porter out of North Carolina is not afraid of the Dodge at all. Porter, we've seen him before. He represents the Chevrolet camp. He'll be going 512 cubic inches of Chevrolet engine. Barefoot in the far lane, 426 cubic inch Chrysler. Both of them running alcohol, supercharged engine, both generating around 1,800 horsepower. The starting line will win this one. The guy that moves quick, kind of like a street fight, the guy that gets the first swing, more than likely wins. Even off the first set of cars, almost totally even at the finish line. Who won that thing? You know, this is amazing. People may question the legitimacy of monster truck racing, but you've seen guys flip to get in it, side-by-side -side racing. It's about as real racing as you're going to see anywhere in America. The BF Goodrich people of Pinda are bringing it all over the country. We saw Fred Schaefer win the first round. We should tell you that Overkill was the victim of the Carolina Crusher in round one. Let's take a look again. The officials are now saying that the Carolina Crusher is victorious in this one. Look how far over Fred Schaefer is and right there by what, three or four feet? Well, Gary, he literally passed him in the air. Well, you notice on the side of John Moore's vehicle, HPX, big corporation based out of northern Kentucky, involved in the nuts and bolts, literally, of motorsports. They're involved with John Moore's team. They're also involved with John Force's drag racing team. We're glad to have them in the sport. Speaking of glad to have somebody in the sport, who would have thought years ago a paintball gun manufacturer would be involved in racing, but they're on the side of Colt Cobra's vehicle, Gary. That's right, Army. It's the Brass Eagle, along with Hot Wheels, the two sponsors of Colt Cobra. In Snake Bite, the far lane, there's no problem on the near side. You know, we were talking about corporate America's involvement. You've also got Firestone, Pendleliner, HPX. Corporate America has realized these monster trucks will get you some exposure. Look here, John Moore. Big upset, Gary Lee. How well, about that? I guess that? so. It's a big upset. Obviously, something broke on Snake Bite, but John Moore takes the victory. This is the new John Moore No Problem truck. As we take a look at Colt Cobra, and now onto the semis, we'll have Bigfoot against Barefoot, and no problem against the Carolina Crusher. So a good day for John Moore, and no problem. Well, John, there's a lot of terminologies in the sport, but the term, the track comes to you, might be in your favor. Uh, you know, you take them any way you can get them to stay in time. Yeah, HPX, no problem. Uh, got another one. We're glad we're going into the next round. I'm, I'm really happy that things are going along all right. Uh, one round at a time. Let's see what happens next round. I'm, I'm not too sure what happened to the other fellow, but uh, we're going to take him as we see him, as, as we come. Uh, oh, boy. I'm so glad to go into the next one. I can't believe it. I mean, we're ready. We're ready. The truck's ready. Love to see that enthusiasm from the participants like John Moore. And once again, let me tell you, these jamborees offer a host of activities for the truck lover as well as the entire family. So to find out more, call or write the Special Events Promotion Company. And here is a look at Barefoot. Fred Schaefer brings up just a ton of experience from the world of drag racing into monster truck competition. And of course, he is a headliner. He carries the banner for Mopower. Well, an interesting thing is he was involved in drag racing, right? But he came to the sport of monster trucks with Chevrolet. He looked at Dodge and said, look, I've got to make some more horsepower to stay ahead of these sports and other Chevrolets. That's where that marriage came to view. We told you about Andy Brass and Bob Chandler, the yellow and orange stripe. Tells you this is the racing truck. Engine located behind the driver and low. And who's that? None other than the number one monster truck driver, Jim Kramer, who is now serving as Andy Brass's mentor and crew chief. You think the corporations are not involved in this sport? I guarantee you, everybody from Ford's watching the truck on the right. Everybody from Dodge is watching that truck on the left, Gary Lee. All right. A name brand shootout here at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Look at the horsepower as Andy Brass nails the hammer and he takes the margin in the big blue Ford. 
So the Ford of Andy Brass, Bigfoot, knocks out the Dodge Barefoot of Fred Schaefer. And Brass will go on to challenge for the championship here at the Indiana State Fairgrounds in Indianapolis. Boy, they just, they're like two old war horses. They just keep going at each other. Schaefer's already thinking right now about the next time he goes up against that blue truck. As we take a look one more time, the near lane, the blue Ford of Brass, the far lane, the red Dodge of Fred Schaefer. What's the attitude of Schaefer? See, he's wheels up in no man's land. He was actually on two wheels. Meanwhile, Andy Brass, no, nah, he's going for frequent flyer miles. He's flying to the finish. Well, now we take a look at John Moore's No Problem, the latest No Problem truck. This is a longer wheelbase than we've seen in the past. A lot of off-road technology on this No Problem. And there is Gary Porter in the Carolina Crusher. Gary Porter comes back with a tried and true Chevrolet, a privateer in the sport, out of North Carolina, more in a far lane. And Gary Porter likes the longer, faster yeah. outdoor tracks. Works very well outdoors when he has uh, more of a shutdown area. He's on the throttle, and it's all Gary Porter. As the no problem Ford nose is over, and Gary Porter takes the victory, so it will be Porter and the big foot of Andy Brass in the finals here at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Look at the superstructure inside the cockpit there with John Moore. As Gary Porter takes the victory and he'll advance to the championship round. Well, these guys, uh, they've been here before. It's about an even toss. I think the big equalizer today is the track. Because the horsepower doesn't mean a whole lot. you got to get the bike. But the track itself, you notice how Porter rolled over the first set of cars? Now he picks up on the throttle. But he had to clear the first set of cars, get in no man's land, and then go for the throat, if you will. Well, there's a look at a Bigfoot truck I think I could probably handle. They'll just turn me loose in it. As we are ready for the finals from Indianapolis, stay with us. Welcome back to the Indiana State Fairgrounds, where Ford trucks present the Penda four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Fall Nationals part of the BF Goodrich Performance Series. Well, it's final time. We had the last two combatants set to go, so let's go trackside and get Army's thoughts. Gary, when the show opened, we told you the starting line just might be the key to this event. At that time, it was smooth. We predicted that they would literally be digging ruts, if you will. Well, we're standing right in what we're gonna call the trenches, and the war will be won today in the battle of these trenches. The war will be between the Chevrolet and the Ford of the Carolina Crusher and Bigfoot. Andy Brass, Gary Porter final time it'll be won and lost in the trenches back to you Gary and there is a look at Jim Kramer the vice president of Bigfoot Incorporated the former Bigfoot driver and a guy that uh, did a lot of training of Andy Brass as you mentioned earlier as we take a look at Gary Porter and the Carolina Crusher GM against Ford and there's the big blue Ford Bigfoot 10 and they're just about the word we get is there is such thing as a Bigfoot 11 on the drawing board I think the sport's not going forward. The technology each week keeps coming out. Porter driving the same truck he's had for a long time. The privateer. But you're not going to scare him one bit. Andy Brass, a class driver and a class rig. It's a classic setup. Chevrolet well, and Ford. It's a team effort, too. Remember, Bigfoot with Andy Brass got upside down in qualifying. They had some repairs to make. They made the repairs, and here he is in the championship round against Gary Porter. In the background, the Pepsi Coliseum. So many fine sporting events indoors here at the State Fairgrounds over the years. And it's going to be Andy Brass. Andy Brass by a fender, and still the enthusiasm is right there. How many years has that man, Jim Craner, been around? Motorsports, but he's still very enthusiastic every time Bigfoot wins. The victory is just as sweet now as the first time I ever got in this truck. It's not often that Jim Cramer is here to watch the Bigfoot 10 compete because he sometimes is in other parts of the world displaying yep. other Bigfoot models. Literally, plus he runs the research and development program, so he's a busy little camper. We're glad to have him here today. And you know, he's just as happy about the win as Andy is. We got a good racer. Both trucks lead good. No Man's Land is where the Ford settles down brass zings it and right there you can see by a fender andy brass is victorious he is track side with army andy i tell you what when you guys go after each other's like two old war horses neither one of you are going to blink out there are you that's right you know gary's always been tough competition but the blue four there just showed it come through today you know the track's been a little rough it was sloppy out there but we've been working on these firestone tires that proved real well for us we got some real good traction pulled hard down through the track the truck did real well for us today 
Well, so on a rainy day, Bigfoot was able to overcome a lot of adversity to take the win. There's a look at uh, Jim Kramer there on the left with the headsets on. Of course, they had to come back from a rollover in qualifying to win it all, but they do. So for Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power. Now here's news of an exciting video release from Diamond P Sports. the thunder and fury of unleashed horsepower times two in this action-packed duo call 1-800-982-7979 for a one-two punch featuring the original shake battle and roll and shake battle and roll two and here's the real haymaker save five dollars when you purchase both videos through this combo offer you'll feel the ground pounding action from the worlds of monster truck racing mud bugging and truck and tractor pulling Call 1-800-982-7979 or send check or money order for $34.90 plus $6 shipping and handling to the address in your screen. All orders processed within 48 hours. 1-800-982-7979. And while you're ordering, pick up on a Diamond P Sport sweatshirt. It's comfortable and stylish with Diamond P sleeve logo. Call 1-800-982-7979.